In this video, I'm going to describe how I was able to rank first in my stats class as a bio major. And I was able to do this with something called the practice based framework that is backed by a variety of research evidence. So there's essentially two different types of frameworks that you could use when you take on courses in undergrad or in any professional school. One is the practice based framework, which applies for courses where there's a lot of calculations like calculus or statistics. And then there's also another framework called the read, recite and review framework that works for courses that are memorization based heavy, such as kinesiology, anatomy, cell biology, any courses that you need to memorize a lot, that framework will work for it. Now, I'm not making this video to brag or anything like that. I'm kind of just making this video so that the people that are taking these courses can understand exactly how to study for them without wasting any time. Now, this is my own advice and it, yes, it's worked for me. It's very subjective. However, I will have articles that will explain and back the types of studying that I'm doing that is effective in order to get good grades in these courses. The timestamps for everything that I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be included below. I'm going to be begin by discussing the research articles and showing the evidence that shows what types of ways you should study for these courses. Then I'm going to discuss something called LEC routine or LEC routine. L is for going to lectures, E is for examples, and finally C is for challenges. And without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before I talk about the research article, I want to talk about kind of like an issue that is going on in society right now and that we're all told that we need to do well in school. Like that's just simple. We are all, all our parents want us to do well in school and they tell us that if we study, we'll get good grades. However, we're not really taught how to learn. We're taught to go to school and to do well, but even in school themselves, our parents or even our friends, no one really teaches us exactly how to learn. So we come to a point where we look around us and we see what everyone else is doing. And we assume, oh, just because they're doing that, we should do the same thing and that's how we're gonna succeed. But that is actually wrong because there is research and that's what exactly what I'm gonna discuss right now that shows what a lot of people are doing is totally wrong. So there was actually a study that tested long-term versus short-term memory at the University of Washington by a professor named Dr. Rodiger, who's also a psychologist. Now he essentially organized three different groups, okay? Well, the first group was a study, 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 study group. So four blocks of studying. The second group was the study, 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 test. So it was three studies and one test. And the final group was the study, test, test, test. So it was four blocks of one study and three tests. And he essentially wanted to measure to see the effects of testing yourself and how important that is for doing well on examinations versus going through the content multiple times. So he essentially asked the people in this research group to read a passage and to either test themselves after based on the test that they would, the university would provide for them or to continue reading the passage at four different blocks. And that's the whole point of the study, 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 study. It's based on four different blocks. Now, the results were very surprising. And I was surprised myself to see how big of a difference studying only would make versus someone that actually takes practice exams. So I have them right here in front of me, actually. And I'll, I'll put them on the screen too, so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So five minutes after they finished the four blocks, they were all tested to see how well they would do on an exam. And of course, not really, of course, I, I, was, I was a bit of surprise myself. And the people that actually did four blocks of studying ended up doing the best on this test. Now that's most likely due to short term memory or something called working memory in psychology. And that's essentially if you just learned through information or if you just met someone or if you just done something, there's a higher likely chance that you'll be able to remember it given like two, three, five, four, five minutes. All right, so I'm editing the video right now, but I realized that I didn't really explain short-term memory very well, so I'll just explain it again over here. So basically, short-term memory is like information that you could keep for a short amount of time, pretty self-explanatory. So like, for example, if someone like recites a couple numbers to like, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, four, you might be able to remember that for the next like 30 seconds, a minute, maybe the next couple of minutes. But if I ask you to recite that to me in maybe a week, you probably won't remember it. So that means that type of memory is short term memory. I'm sorry, I really didn't explain that really properly, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. But long term memory is something that will be able to stay in your memory for a long amount of time. And that's due to synaptic plasticity, which is essentially how the connections between neurons are strengthened over time. So this is kind of what the study was trying to test. So as I said, in the five minutes one, this four study blocks ended up doing the best. However, if we look at the one week results, we could see that the study, 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 so the four blocks of studying group actually ended up doing the worst and they dropped from a zero point, what is it, like an 8.3 to a zero point like four. So they dropped by 50% on how well they did after one week. However, if we look at the group that did three blocks of testing, they actually ended up performing the best after one week and keeping and retaining most of the information. So this just goes to show how important it is for people to be taking tests once they understand a certain type of information. There's really no use in going through the information again and again and again and again and again because that doesn't help us actively recall the information. And that's what's gonna happen to us on the exam. We're not gonna have the notes in front of us 
us where we can answer, we're gonna have to actively recall it and try to go deep down in our brain to find the answer for it. Now, I hope you guys will take this information, actually start incorporating it into your work because a lot of students make the mistake that they keep rereading and keep rereading and they think that that's the right way for them to do really well. They end up studying so hard and they don't get good grades like they really want to. And the key for courses where you, there's a lot of calculation is seriously practice. Understand it once, keep practicing and fill the gaps when you get stuff wrong. Now I'm going to talk about my LEC routine and the first is lectures and I think lectures is very important that people actually go and try to actually learn because I made this mistake in like first year. I went to lectures and I would open my phone, play a couple of games. Ball Blast was very popular back then. I don't know if you guys know what Ball Blast is, but it was a game that I played so hard and I got to a really high level and that's because I played it during lecture. I wouldn't really focus during lecture and I realized that that was an issue that I was doing because I would always go back home and listen to the lectures. I would waste that during the day and it would all go to trash when I could have just literally went to lecture, sat in the front and understood what the professor was saying and use my time later on to practice or to at least fill in the gaps of what I didn't understand in lecture. So that's why I think lecture is very important so that you don't waste your time later. Second is E, and E is also very important because that's the examples. Because it's one thing to go to lecture and to see the professor doing the examples in class and to tell yourself, I understand it. And it's another thing to go back to your apartment or to go back to wherever you're living when you're in your university and to actually answer those questions again. So something that I used to do actually a lot is once I finished the lecture, so like at night when I'm studying for the lecture, I would print or I would find the questions for the examples that we did in class and I would try to answer those right there before I read any over my content again for that lecture, before I looked at the examples again I would try to see how much I actually understood from that lecture and this was super effective because I had to go back actively recall all the examples that I did and I would be able to find exactly what I'm not doing well in or something that I didn't fully comprehend in class and this is the point where I would go back to my notes or go back to the lecture and re-listen to it or re-understand exactly what happened in class so that I could understand how to answer that example properly. And finally, it's very important to challenge yourself because I don't know if you guys know, but literally every teacher will put a hard question on your exam, whether that's something they didn't discuss or that's something they did discuss, but in a much harder sense. And that's why you would challenge yourself with harder questions. And in this day and age, Google is amazing. You will always be able to find harder questions than one you're learning in class, whether that's in calculus, where there's like calculus three, four, whatever the case may be, you'll be able to find harder questions for sure, stats, any course, even organic chemistry, you'll always be able to find harder questions. And that's why I believe it's so important to always challenge yourself and to do harder questions because when those harder questions come on the exam, it's gonna be second nature to you. You're gonna be able to answer them quicker, not waste time thinking exactly how to answer those questions because in first year undergrad, in first year, first semester undergrad, that's actually kind of like when I did the worst and that was where I learned how to study better. And I literally in that break, I searched online how to do well in these classes, how to do well in these courses, watching videos like the one I'm doing right now to figure out exactly what was the most effective way to do well in classes. And that's when I actually found out that challenging yourself is so important so that when the actual exam comes with challenging questions, they're not as bad as they are on other students who don't do challenging questions because you've already done them before. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video because I know I enjoyed making it and I enjoyed explaining how important it is to use a practice-based framework when it comes to these courses. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a like and a subscribe down below. I'm going to be making more content about how to study for classes and how exactly to routine yourself to do well in these classes. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers! So the results were very, very surprising. I was surprised myself to see how big of a difference... Well, my screensaver came on.